Welcome back to the show. In the previous session, we talked about uh, the key prioritization of technologies that Africa could take to improve its agricultural performance. And it seemed to be very obvious uh, to our leadership from all the commitment which were taken. If it is so obvious, why our governments didn't take bold steps to have them adopted and used? The issue of prioritization is also quite complex, as you understand, especially you put yourself in the shoes of politicians. They have to deal with the 101 issues, so things, yeah. interests, etc., yeah. etc. Et but then it's also that we live in a situation that is very dynamic. So what you may look to be important today may not be the same tomorrow. Mm. So the, the issue of prioritization, and by the way, the reforms I, mentioned, I referred to, one issue was to say we will better deliver if we can identify where do we put our limited resources. The resources will always be limited, yes. and you can't spread them too thinly. Mm -hmm. uh, but in that process, the issue becomes uh, how do you ensure agility in the system and resilience mm. so that you are able to adapt, having identified where do you start? Yes. What is the most limiting issue? And you can look at this from two angles, which usually talk about the supply side, mm. the interventions. But you can also prioritize from the demand side. And actually this demand side is more compelling and is more politically acceptable, more or less. The, and what uh, I would say is three things come up as priorities today for most of our governments, all our governments. Mm -hmm. Number one is, of course, food security. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do in terms of interventions should be meeting the need to have not just food, but a decent, nutritious food. Mm -hmm. That is cardinal, because that element is going to impact on everything else, on health, on education on general well-being, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. The second one related to food security is employment. employment. And I'm sure you can accept that this is the thing that is making our politicians sleepless nights, yes. especially for the youth. So our agriculture, in terms of priority, has to respond to the issue of employment, mm. issue of entrepreneurship. Mm. And the third one related to, to what you mentioned uh, is, is how do we produce sustainably? And I talk mm. about the complete value chain, the food system, mm. is production, is processing, is the packaging and consumption. So that all value. When they paint agriculture in Africa, uh, it is dark. Do we have some success stories in Africa where science technology is being adopted and uh, where the farmers are reaping the benefit of its adoption? Nigeria took a bold step around the turn of the 21st century. Many of you may remember that time we had the leadership in the hands of uh, uh, President Lushegun Obasanjo. Mm -hmm. And I remember him uh, making a pronounced statement that uh, at the turn of the century, the future will be technological and biological, with biotechnology as a driver of processes. Mm -hmm. And he didn't leave it there. A following year, he, he passed a policy to establish an organization called the National Biotechnology Development Agency to promote what biotechnology, the kind of direction Nigeria should take. Mm -hmm. And what followed then was a policy around uh, innovations called biotechnology, including genetic engineering. This created a climate that enabled the development of cowpea. Cowpea is a major crop there. In fact, they think about yes. it as, yeah, as a, a crop rich in protein is like meat mm. uh, uh, that is uh, affordable to the less fortunate members of the society. So they have developed cowpea that is uh, resistant to pests. And this is now being commercially grown. And if you track it backwards, you can see a political direction followed by institutional arrangement and a goodwill that has sustained uh, all this. How do we bring in the private sector, private investment to come yeah. and uh, uh, fuel a bit uh, 
uh, those research, adoption and adaptation of research first, yeah. and then adoption and use. Yeah. And later, he talked about uh, agro-processing, yeah. uh, uh, and then come do agro-processing, add value, and then open the market. Yeah. This is a way of sustaining. When you look at successful examples, more recently you find a lot of success in Malawi, for instance, in Kenya as well, on the back of e-commerce platforms in, in, in other countries. And these are farmers getting to more commercial entrepreneurship because they're being enabled by digital technologies, mm. and if, both in terms of financial services, but also access to information, both marketing and, and, the, and the trading information. So that in itself is, is what is uh, making it happen. So in terms of uh, how do we accelerate that and how do we expand that, this is where actually the question comes in in terms of uh, building more engagement and uh, promotion at the level of both policy as well as in the continent in Africa, we have the whole issue of transnational and regional value chains. Mm -hmm. So those are actually huge enablers in terms of the size of markets. And, and what I'm speaking to is your question about private sector, mm -hmm. because the whole system essentially has to be seen from a business perspective. We, in Africa, especially agriculture, suffered the consequence of agriculture being a social service driven by development aid. But we have to change that to actually get agriculture driven by itself because it can make money for itself as a business. Now, there are two things. So we have to look at the, both the commercial value of the whole system, the whole agriculture, and there is also the social value. Now, these two are not contradictory. They can actually go hand in hand. And this is why we're saying that agriculture should demonstrate in Africa the, the interdependencies between private and public interest. And public, yeah. We need to work uh, in a way, in such a way, private sector feels that agriculture can have uh, some business pro pro yeah. prospects. And it has. Uh, 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 and it has and so that they can invest in yeah. uh, agriculture and the whole value chain yeah. to have it sustainable. How do you see the uh, coming in of science and what Africa should take as a direction and prioritization of science and technology during, let's say, the next decades? I'm actually spoiled for choice because there is this talk of uh, the convergence of knowledge be it biological, physical, <laughs> socioeconomic, mm. and they are talking that this is actually, it's already manifesting itself in, in form of what will be the fourth industrial revolution. We have internet, big data, what not. What. So there are so many things in there. But we started on the platform of agriculture, which you articulated very well as the foundation of economic development in Africa. So if I can keep that script, I think that what I think could drive uh, African agriculture would be something, if I can simplify this, something that would start with quality seed mm -hmm. to be planted. This would uh, be a product from uh, science and technology, quality seed. And when you get the seed, it's planted in the soil. So we need, we need technologies that can help revamp our already declined fertility, soil fertility in Africa. Mm -hmm. And if you have the seed, you have addressed the soil, then the crop will grow. Mm -hmm. You have addressed okay. production, but you will uh, not stop uh, there with uh, production. The policy comes in, market end, and so on. Very, and so forth. very good. Colleagues, let's now conclude. The issue of agriculture transformation for Africa is an imperative, is urgent. It's like sometimes we say food security is a priority. Food security cannot be a priority. Food security is life. You can't, you can't decide today is not a priority. When you look at the transformations in other continents, first industrial revolution, second industrial revolution, mm -hmm. they were running on the back of something, natural resources, including steel and all that. We have, as Africa, an opportunity to leapfrog on the basis of technology. 
uh, and innovations, from the digital technologies to other emerging technologies in biotechnology and all that. So we have to be clear about the ambition, which we have no alternative, we just need to do it. Mm. Number two, we have, as a continent, the means to do it. So let's get it done. Thank you very much. We are all in agreement that uh, transformation is what Africa needs. And the key drivers of transformation are two things. Uh, technological interventions that will be groundbreaking, that will transform agriculture from the way we are doing it. And we talked that, about that in details. But that will have to be twinned with political solutions. And I don't talk about politics here. I mean, actually, the enabling environment, encompassing policies, regulations, markets, institutions, all other enablers that need to align to make agriculture transform into an enterprise, rather than the hobby we have all traditionally known it to be. For Africa, it is imperative to transform its agriculture, not only for food security, but uh, also po for poverty eradication. Yeah. Uh, and this calls for income. It means we produce not only uh, for uh, our, uh, our, 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 stomach. our stomach, we produce also for the market. Mm -hmm. And we need to add value to what we produce. Yeah. I think that is a first key. And that, uh, if I link it to the starting point, that calls for leadership and very clear vision, which is communicated to other stakeholders. And this needs to be very well reflected into policies and uh, regulations, which will then provide the environment for that innovation you are talking about mm -hmm. to come and be adopted by uh, the farmers mm -hmm. and other players mm -hmm. in the value chain. Exactly. And here we are talking from uh, the farmers, but also the private sector with uh, uh, their capability of transforming this and adding value. We are talk talking of researchers in different institutions, national agricultural research centers, national uh, science council, uh, etc., and universities. Mm -hmm. We are also talking of policy makers mm -hmm. and decision makers in the governments. Uh, respective different departments, but, but, but also, I mean, the whole. Uh, I don't know how I call it, but it is opinion shapers mm -hmm. to change the mindset of people to, fr fr from those ideas of feeding my family being the key objective mm -hmm. to now feeding the world yeah. being the objective. I think if we do that, then uh, things will be clearer and we can leapfrog as uh, my brother uh, Martin is saying. And science technology should work w hand in hand with those other key players mm -hmm. so that we are able to work together as one in a concerted manner. Mm -hmm. And this is the whole essence of promoting dialogue on uh, agriculture and agricultural technologies and also how to bring in science, how to improve uh, policies, regulations, and how to uh, continue to feeding with evidence and data the leadership which will then uh, sustain the support. That is the essence of Kikau. We will be uh, welcoming different players to come and discuss the challenges uh, we face in agriculture and how we can address them. So, ladies and gentlemen, viewers, let me invite you to the next Kikau as I thank Martin and Francis for your contribution. Thank you very much. Yes, so the verdict is out. Science, technology and innovation are all necessary ingredients in developing and improving Africa's agriculture. But progress will have to be faster. Until next time, my name is Joe Gale. Thanks for watching Kikao.